Coming up in this video, I'm going to show you how I paint the Eidenith Deepkin Leviadon, its shell and its skin. Welcome back to Mini Junkie, everyone. My name is Jarrett. Uh, short intro, I always say that and it goes long, but I'm going to keep it short. This is a pretty short video overall. This video, I'm not going to paint the entire Leviadon. I still haven't painted the entire uh, model. It's quite large. And some of the things that are on the model, like the armor and maybe the straps, I guess, are painted, things you can see painted in my other Eidneth Deepkin uh, videos, such as the troops. Specifically, um, I painted its armor with that like teal colored metallic, which is a mix of scale 75 paints. So check out the, I think it was where I paint in the Marty Thralls. You can see some of those steps in there. Mostly I wanted to tackle painting the shell and the skin, like the flippers, etc. Because obviously those are the biggest parts of the model. Those are parts I haven't covered before and I thought it'd be interesting to see how fast I could do it, and I did it really fast. Probably shows, but you know, whatever. Coming off the heels of my recent speed painting with inks video, I'm gonna be using inks again, especially on the on the top shell area, and so that's gonna be pretty quick. And then I'm gonna use something, I you could use inks, but I end up using something from Badger, it's from their Minotaur, they're called Ghost Tints, and it's a green, so you'll see how I use that on the flesh. If you're new to the channel and you're interested in painting miniatures for board games and war games, consider subscribing and click the bell notification so you don't miss any of these videos. Let's get right into it. All right guys, if you haven't already, you might want to watch that speed painting with inks tutorial video uh, but it's not mandatory you're going to start from a white primer all over the leviadon and here you can see i've actually tested the effect i'm going for on one piece of the shell and what we're going to do is we're going to start out with vallejo brown ink and we're going to cover the entire shell with that uh, just you know work quickly just you know don't be sparing with it put lots on uh, work quickly with a fairly large brush maybe like a gw shade brush and you're going to cover the entire shell, including any horns and things on his head, and also uh, eventually also the underside of the edges, where anywhere you can see this shell should be covered in the brown. And as you're working, look for anywhere that it starts to create deep pools or like big spots, and just soak that up with your brush. Now I leave the video going for a bit here, um, just so you can see how I'm applying it, and etc. But um, you know. It, not a whole lot more to say because it's just a lot of shell to cover with this step. Certainly try to be neat as you can. Uh, avoid getting the brown ink on any of the you know other white areas such as on the fins. Um, it's almost going to be hard to avoid though and don't worry about that because we're going to come back and clean that up later as we head into other steps. A couple hours for that to dry you know really make sure it's dry. Uh, you can also use a hair dryer to speed it up and then you're going to come back with that same brown ink but this time you're just going to apply it around the outer perimeter or outer edge of each of these segments of his shell. So what we're doing is we're leaving a lighter color in the center and we're creating that dark area around the outside of each uh, you know segment. That uh, the ink works in a way that the more layers you apply the more opaque you're going to get. Um, See so we don't need to change up what color of ink we're using or add any black or anything like that to still get a, a brown um, outer ring, a darker brown one, and then that's going to kind of blend together a little bit better because they're effectively the same ink being applied. For any of the jagged areas or horns uh, just sort of do the spiky end of it and then maybe a little around the base. We're going to let that dry again using a hair dryer if you want to speed it up and now we're going to take skin wash ink and we're going to just basically glaze the entire surface everything you've painted so far one coat of this right out of the bottle no dilution or thinning and you're just going to spread it all over uh, really avoid pools this time think of it as a filter and skin wash has a bit of an orange tone to it so it's going to lend that orangey tone to the entire shell Moving on to the skin, we're gonna take white, take any white you like to use, uh, make sure it's not too thick and clumpy. And we're just gonna go and paint over any of the browns and, and various colors of inks that might've got onto the flesh of the turtle uh, or Leviadon because we're going to once again be using the speed paint technique to tint the surface and you don't want these brown splotches showing through. Looks like I was impatient and didn't even let the previous step dry, but I'm going to take sepia ink now, once again, straight out of the bottle. Take a brush with your best point to it, 
and we're going to go around and line all the areas uh, between each of the segments of the shell and it's okay if you're you know obviously you can see I'm being very quick and I'm not being super careful to only get it in the you know the crease because uh, I think it's okay if it's allowing some of that darkness to bleed onto the shell segment itself I think it looks good uh, so yeah go ahead and do this step and um, again just be neat Try not to get this on the white areas we just fixed, and I probably should have done those in a different order now that I think about it. And we're going to just create this uh, separation between each of the shells and give it a little more definition. Now here's an optional step. One of the things that I think looks really good about this shell is having a satin finish to it. So I take satin varnish um, from Vallejo and I'm airbrushing it on. You could probably hand brush this. I would probably thin it down with a little bit of water to do that and work very quickly because you're going to potentially get some streaks in the finish. This step's very optional. You can always just use a matte finish from a spray can if you like. Now for the skin or the flesh of the turtle, I just decided to try using uh, Minotaur Ghost Tint. Typically this is airbrushed, uh, but what I decided to do is use it the way I've been using inks and just slather it on with a, you know, a, a brush with a good belly, like a shade brush. Moving quickly, once again, this does tend to dry fairly fast. So what can happen is if you don't go fast enough, um, you could get overlap lines or tied, tied lines and pooling. Uh, and I just go all over the, the flesh with this one pass as quick as I can, being neat, uh, making sure, you know, it's you want to make sure it's kind of filling in all the little cracks on its flesh so that you get that shading um, and that definition and contrast. I really like this though, it's a nice sort of aquatic looking green. Uh, this, you know, if I was imagining the flesh of a sea turtle, I know where I'm going with this. To add some darkness to the tips of the fins, I took Vallejo black green ink and I'm, again, I'm not thinning it and I'm just brushing it over just the tips of these uh, larger areas at the edges, back edges of the fins. I just think it added a nice bit of visual interest to the fins, breaks up, you know, the monotony of the green by going darker towards the edges and it just looks cool. Use that as well to apply shading wherever it seemed appropriate and here you can see I'm applying it across the top of the tail area. Uh, you could do it around the face uh, to add shading around it, um, you know, the cheeks and things like that. So anywhere you want to darken it is where you're going to use this ink. I've said this before in videos, this is my trusty uh, portable travel size hair dryer I keep by my painting area. Um, I highly recommend having a hair dryer in your painting area because you can really speed up the drying time. Uh, you know, maybe it's not appropriate for certain kinds of paints, I haven't met any. Uh, but for inks and things like glazes, um, even washes, if you're, you know, you don't hold the hair dryer too close, it can really speed up your drying time so you can keep moving. Uh, optional step here, taking that dark black green ink and just going back and darking it further, kind of blending it in towards the lighter green by, by going over both areas a little bit so you get a, a little bit more gradual um, transition between the light green and the dark green at the edges of the fins. No fancy rotating shot of the final product because he's not really done. So I thought I would just put him on the table and go around it with my iPhone here. You can see the satin effect on the shell uh, from how the light's reflecting. It's not quite glossy and it's not overly matte. I think it looks really good on this type of a shell. You can see how the flesh turned out. And by the way, the underside of the turtle, I just did like a seraphim sepia wash over it. It's kind of blotchy, kind of crappy. But truth is, most of the time, people aren't going to be able to see it because of the way the, the Leviathan uh, is on the table. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, consider subscribing, sharing, and liking. And we'll see you next time. Coming up in this, I'm going to show you how I paint the shell and the skin of the deep kin... Coming up in this video, I'm going to show you how I sh... Ugh.